Before you turn the machine on, make sure all drains are closed, screens and wash arms are back in place. When you're ready to turn on the machine, flip the red rocker switch to on. The machine will automatically start to fill up. And once it's full, it'll start to heat up, and in 15 to 20 minutes, it'll be ready to use. When you're ready to use, select your operating mode between Energy Saver, Normal, and Fast. If you want to shut down the conveyor, hit the Stop button. Energy Saver works great for when the wear is light and you're looking to save energy. This will cut your water usage in half and will slow the belt speed down. So if there's less accumulation of wear, Energy Saver is the right choice. Normal would work well if there was a heavy soiled load and extra water is pumped out of the rinse tank to help clean baked on items. Finally, for fast, we increase the water usage and the conveyor speed to help get the job done as fast as possible. This is one door option from Champion called our insulated split door. This door is great for low ceiling height as well as very tight aisles. It's insulated so it's cool to the touch and it has a complex opening. So to open and access our door, first start with the top part. You lift until it falls into the second set of hinges. After that's securely in place, lift the bottom section of the door all the way until you grasp the larger section of the hinges. Now your door is locked and in place so you can access the inside of the machine. Once cleaning has been finished and everything is back where it should be inside the unit, to close the doors, first start with the door closest to you. Push back the bottommost hinge and slide all the way down. You'll have to move two sets of hinges in order to let it set in place. So for the top door, move the hinges back in place. When coming down, there is a safety catch that will prevent fingers from being pinched. Push back the safety catch and the door will close completely. When cleaning only the bottom of the tank, open just the door unit and place it in its own set of hooks. Then you can access just the scrap screens. This is the Champion hinged insulated door that's cool to the touch and provides excellent opening to the machine. When opening the door, first go to the smaller panel on the right. Lift up and the door will swing out. Now you have more leverage for the larger door, which you also lift up and swing out. The doors open all 180 degrees, allowing full access into the machine. To close the doors, close the larger door first. Simply roll it over the hinge and let it fall in place. Do the same with the smaller door. By falling into place, this totally seals the door, allowing no water to exit. The doors are very sturdy and heavy-duty built to handle the rigors of the dish room. We'll show you now how all our doors are able to be slammed shut. Slamming first the larger door, it will drop into place. Smaller door, drop into place. This is our standard lift door for the flight machine for Champion. To access the inside of the machine, you grab the black handle and lift straight up. Make sure the door is fully hooked and it will stay in place. Once finished inside the machine, simply go back to the black handle, lift up just slightly, move the hooks back and the door will slide all the way down and be locked in place. This is a standard feature of all Champion flight machines. It is the external pre-wash bucket on the pre-wash section. It is designed to be easily accessible without having to open the doors to clean inside the machine. To access it, simply lift the lid off and hook it on the front. So now you can use both hands to get to the bucket and the scrap screen. When it's time to load the dishwasher, again we are at the load end of the dish machine, the electronic eyes will pick up any wear or racks and automatically start the pumps and motors. When you're ready to load the machine, make sure your start button is on, and then, before any wear is put inside the machine, make sure it's thoroughly pre-rinsed with warm water to get any major debris off the wear. We always recommend starting with your silverware and your glassware and cups in order to get the cleanest possible results. So when loading silverware, do not load more than an inch deep so the water can accurately get each of the pieces. So when loading, place the racks directly on the belt before the electric eyes, and the electric eyes will pick up the rack for loading plates, put the plates directly onto the belt itself, in between each finger. We like to have good spacing in between the plates, and that way you'll get the best results from the water. Also, you can load trays directly into the dishwasher as well. 
Extra spacing is recommended between the trays so we can get the best water coverage on each one. When the rack or the wear comes to the end of the machine, we have a shutoff tray that will automatically stop. To re-engage the machine, remove the wear that hits the shutoff tray and put the shutoff tray back in place. This automatically starts the belt again and then continue unloading the dish machine. Again, at Champion, we recommend all loose wear to be racked to go through the machine. However, if something was to get in the belt and cause a jam, our anti-jam switch will automatically engage, shutting off the belt. To help remove the jam, as a standard feature, we have what we call a reverse jog switch. It's located right under the end cap of the unload. Lift it off, and you can access the reverse button. When you push this button, once you push and hold it, the belt will reverse its direction to easier get out the jam. Our curtains are special to Champion. It's very important when these are installed that the short side is always facing the load end of the machine. This ensures proper insulation, and we also have stickers to show where each one of these goes. This is the load end of the machine and a great shot of how the curtain needs to be installed, with the shortest flaps always facing the load end of the machine. This is a picture of the label. They are located where each curtain needs to go, indicating whether it's a long or short curtain. Also, the part and the direction of travel. Also, the part number is simply the part number for the label. The part number for the curtain is located in your manual that's supplied with the machine or available online. And we recommend taking the curtains out after each meal period to clean inside the flaps. To do so, after the door is open, simply go in, lift up, and the catches will come clean and pull out to access the curtains. When putting the curtain back in, always make sure the NSF label is facing the load end of the machine. To put back in, line one end of the curtain rod up inside the hook and put the other in its place. The curtain will be secure. At the beginning of the day, always make sure your drain is in the closed position, which it is now. But at the end of the day, when you're ready to open the drain, simply push it down, which will release all the water from the individual tank. There are multiple drains at each tank, and please refer to this label when opening and closing. And to close it, simply pull all the way back until you feel it tight closed, in the vertical position. Now we're looking at the inside of the machine. Right now, Gary is going to remove the upper wash arms. To do this, he pushes up on a release lever that lets the wash arms drop. Then he simply pulls straight back and the wash arms come right out. Now for the removal of the lower wash arm. Simply lift straight up and pull out. Now you can take this over to the compartment sink and clean out each wash arm. To clean these, you'll need to remove each end cap. Simply turn counterclockwise and they pop right out and you can clean and access the inside of the wash arm easier. To reinstall, make sure the O-ring is still in place. Simply line up the groove with the dimple on the wash arm and turn clockwise to lock. Repeat the process on each wash arm tube. Before reinstalling the wash arm, make sure the orange O-ring is properly in place in the back of the manifold. To reinstall the wash arms, simply line up with the guides and slide the wash arm back in place. You'll lift it up and you'll feel it drop into its spot. Push down, make sure it's secure, and you're ready to install the upper. To install the upper wash arm, again, line the back of the manifold up with the guides, tilting the front of the wash arm down. Now once it's lined up, push back until you feel it all the way, until you can't go any further. Once there, simply push up and it will lock in place. Make sure it's secure and you're ready to start washing dishes. These wash arms are not interchangeable. Notice we have five wash arms at the top location and only four at the bottom. This is our design for maximum cleaning purposes. What we're showing now is the reassembly and disassembly of our dual rinse or econo rinse arm. This arm must be cleaned after each meal period because it recirculates the water from the final rinse and can get debris stuck in the nozzles. Before replacing the dual rinse arm, there should be two orange O-rings at the end of the pipe fitting, a round O-ring and a square cornered O-ring. The square corner goes on first and the rounded edge goes on second. 
What we're showing you here is the very end of the dual wrench spray arm. You'll notice the notch. Line up the notch with the pin in the rear, and once you line it up, you turn it a quarter of a turn, and that locks it in place. For reinstalling the upper dual rinse arm after it's been thoroughly cleaned, we line it up and we put it in the tab and we push straight back. Then we turn down. To remove the scrap screens, simply reach in, lift up, and pull the scrap screen out. Use both handles to carry the scrap screen over to the trash can. You'll notice the width of our scrap screens are less than the diameter of a trash can, so you can easily put them in and clean them out. Do not bang the scrap screen on the trash can. There are two sets of scrap screens in each tank. To reinstall, line the scrap screen up on one of the farmost sides, set it in place, and let it drop down. Repeat the same process with the second scrap screen. Once it's dropped down, it will fit securely in place. A pump intake screen is going to be on each tank and must be removed after each meal period for cleaning. To remove, simply slide down your hand along the side wall of the tank, lift straight up, and the pump intake will release off its guide. To clean it, we recommend scrubbing the screen itself of any food debris in order to make sure the pump is getting its maximum suction it needs. These tabs must line up inside to lock in place. To put back in, make sure the screen is facing down. Line the open end up with the side wall of the tank with the guide bars and push straight down, and once it's locked in place, it's secure. This is for cleaning the load end of the dishwasher. To clean, first lift the top shelf off. Then you can gain access to the front shelf. Simply lift and pull out. To remove, simply lift straight up and pull out. Now you have access to the side of the machine. These two nozzles that you see here are used to blow any debris into the pre-wash section, which will then flow into the external pre-wash bucket. This is a standard feature on all Champion dishwashers. The water is the pre-wash water, so it is not fresh water, so we're not wasting water. This is recirculated water from the pre-wash tank. Note our stainless steel sprockets and our center support. We're wiping down the load end of the dishwasher. We're cleaning any food debris that may have fallen that our gushers did not get. Wipe thoroughly under the belt to clean the load end. To put the side panel back on, line the tab up with the bottom of the stainless unload shelf, then slide over, push down, and it locks in place. To reinstall, simply put the front panel in first. Make sure it's lined up with each guide and slide down. Then take the cap and put it straight over and let it fall down and lock in place. This is now secure and reinstalled. This is the Champion Heat Recovery Unit. It's designed to take cold water and convert it into hot water that will be fed to the booster, provide 180 degrees to the final rinse. We have made a low profile design that's very easy to clean and we will demonstrate by opening the top lid, exposing half of the heat recovery. The front panel lifts right off, showing the condensing coils as well as the top of the heat recovery unit. Now to access the bottom, move the panel down. Without the use of tools, these screws can easily be taken off to expose the underside of the heat recovery coil, where our rinse spray hose can be used to hose out the bottom. We need to do this every day to make sure that any standing water will not grow into bacteria or mold. Once finished hosing out the heat recovery unit, push the panel closed and tighten the bolts until you feel them snug securely or lock. Install the front panel by lining up the stainless steel panel with the sides of the heat recovery box and putting the bottom lip in first. Come over the top and push straight down. The top hinge lid simply pull forward and set over the heat recovery unit to secure it. One note that I do want to make is that all water being sprayed in the heat recovery unit will go down the drain. The drain is located in the back of the heat recovery unit. The water will not fall back into the machine. The heat recovery unit does need to be cleaned daily to prevent the growth of mold or other bacteria. This is easily accomplished by our low-profile design.